And as I see people, I will let them in. But welcome to the exit tier three with no support meeting. Um, I think there's only a few of you, but if you would just put your name in the chat and the role that you play in your school, that would be much appreciated. Uh, we do keep that for documentation. And I think most of you know who I am, but just in case, um, my name is Monique Sullivan and I am the Continuous School Improvement Coordinator. And I serve on the ESCA team, but I also work with the assessment team um, under Maine's model of school supports, which falls under several sections of the ESSA statute, uh, specifically sections uh, 1111, which is uh, school improvement or the state plan, and then section 1003, which specifically talks about funding provided to schools that have been identified for uh, tier three supports or CSI supports. So I know I just let a few of you in. Um, if you wanna just put your name and the role that you play in your school, that would be much appreciated if you put that in the chat. We do keep that for our notes. I don't believe this, uh, this webinar will last very long. So uh, hopefully we'll have plenty of time for questions. So we have um, our mission and our vision and our strategic priorities for the Maine Department of Education. And this is the driving force behind all of the work that we do at the MDOE or the Maine DOE. So today's objectives are to understand the requirements for the tier three exit plan, uh, understand timeline for using remaining FY23 and FY24 SIG funds, Prepare for monitoring or performance reporting for FY23 and FY24 funds, SIG funds, and continue implementing effective evidence-based practices. So I did want to just take a few moments to congratulate all of you on your continued school improvement journey and for being able to exit tier three status um, by increasing the academic achievement of all your students. Currently, you don't have any student population that is experiencing challenges across the indicators. So that is something to be really uh, proud of. And um, hopefully you've take, you'll take some time to celebrate with your schools uh, about that accomplishment. But after taking some time to celebrate with your school, now is the time to start working on your school's tier three exit plan and to plan the next steps on your, school, uh, your school's continuous school improvement journey. So the next few slides are just going to be talking about the actual tier three exit criteria. Um, I thought I would throw this in there because a lot of it's kind of a little bit confusing when you think about how you can exit and how you can't. So I'm hoping that I kind of simplified this, but if I didn't, I apologize. Um, so right now you guys are considered to be cohort one. Uh, your schools were identified for tier three support in 1819-2018. For a variety of reasons, you weren't able to exit that status or you weren't eligible to exit status until 23-24. Um, I put a little asterisk there because if you think about it, because of COVID and then last year with the feds, when we had our monitoring visit by the feds and also some other things that happened, they wouldn't allow schools, they wouldn't allow us to exit schools. So... That's why several schools got the classification of unable to exit. Um, and then in this year, 23-24, you do have the eligible, you, have, or you are eligible to exit because you've, are, you've served three years, served, you've had three years um, under tier three. You've actually had more than that, but some things happened. We had a new assessment and the feds wanted us to do more calibration. So now 23-24, you are able to, you are eligible to exit and to be able to exit, you have to have two consecutive years of not meeting the tier three identification criteria. Um, and so and again, I put a little asterisk because you probably should have been able to exit last year, but because the Fed said no, that's why it got moved up to 23-24. So there are different options for exiting. Um, you could have a yes, you could have a no. 
Um, this group of, of schools actually had a yes, your exit with no support and um, no student populations are experiencing challenges, what we call emerging across all indicators. So therefore, you're you're kind of you're just that's a great place to be. You don't have any uh, student populations that are experiencing um, uh, challenges. There's also exit with ATSI support or tier one, and then there's the no, you're not able to exit. So just to give you a, a little bit of very basic um, understanding of identification cycles, so Maine's model school support is run every year. But identifications are only going to be made every three years for tier one, or sorry, tier two, which is TSI, tier three for CSI, and every six years for tier one, ATSI. The next identification cycle will be the fall of 2027. However, depending on your school's eligibility status, um, exit status, um, it may be able to, a school may be able to exit or convert to a different tiered status on an off cycle year. So, for example, um, you guys are kind of on an off cycle. You're not really on an off cycle year, but some schools may be, especially ones that were identified for tier two last year or tier three re-identified. They're going to kind of be on an off on an off cycle. Also, um, we just go back for a second. I don't want to really get into the weeds, but if your school was unable to exit, you potentially could exit again in the fall of 2024 because you've already served your three or you've already had your three years. But also, we don't need to focus on that because you guys did exit, so that's um, awesome. Um, the next few slides are just talking about the tier three exit plan, um, then just completing that exit template. So again, we're asking that this um, template be turned in to me um, as a PDF or Word document, Microsoft Word. We are really not supposed to handle Google Docs at the state, especially when it's um, a form of um, documentation. So we request to either have it as a PDF or a Microsoft Word document. Um, it needs to be completed by June 12th um, because we wanna have plenty of time. If there's any questions or concerns, we can get all that worked out before June 30th. Um, and the, really the purpose of this is to ensure that a school doesn't regress back into an identified status um, in the future, in future means model of school supports identification cycles. Um, we're asking that all schools exiting tier three status are required to submit uh, a tier three exit plan when our designated date is June 12th. And the failure to complete and submit the tier three exit plan by June 12th will prohibit the use of the SIG funds past the fiscal year, the state fiscal year, which is June 30th. Um, the plan, I broke it down into parts um, to try to make it a little simpler. Um, just some things to keep a uh, reminder that no cost can occur after 9-30-2024. And the leadership coaching support does end on June 30th. And the next part is just real basic, just your school information. And this one is quite annotated. I tried to put everything on one slide. Um, so this is actually parts two and three, and this is where we get to kind of the, the, the meat of the exit plan. So you're going to do this for both FY22, sorry, FY23 and FY24 funds. Um, at the April uh, tier three principals meeting, we talked about how you could go in and look um, to see how much uh, your funds have been reimbursed to the, to the, uh, to the district. So you want to look at that. But you're going to go in and look at your award amount, put that in there. Um, you can either go to check grants for me, or you can talk with your business manager or both. And then you're going to put um, here how much it's been reimbursed as a 430. And then next um, uh, space or cell would be amount remaining as a 430. And then the next question is for you. Um, you don't have to spend this money. If you're done and you've done, you don't want to spend any more and you're going to be done 630 and you're not going to have any expenses after 630 2024, then it says keep using funds between 7 1 2024 and 9 30 2024. If you're going to be done on 630, you're not going to have any more obligated expenses, um, then put no, you can put no down. If you do want to spend this money and use it over the summer between 7 1 and 9 30, um, then you would put yes. Um, if you said no, you wouldn't have to fill out the part in the middle um, with the assumption that all those expenses up to 630 or June 30th 
are already in your um, FY23 and or FY24 SIG plan. Um, so you kind of just skip down to this last part here. Um, we are anticipating there's going to be leftover funds that are not going to get spent, and we'd like to be able to reallocate them over the summer. So if you're going to have if you're going to have leftover money, does the school anticipate not using all the remaining allocated funds? Um, if you put um, no, we're going to use up all of our money, then put no. If you say no, I think we're going to have leftover funds that we're not going to spend. Um, and you don't mind reallocating that or giving that back to the uh, to the state, actually the main DOE, then you would just put your amount down here of how much you're getting going to release back to the state. And then we'll reallocate that for ESCA programming. Could be Title I summer school, could be something else, but it's all ESCA funding and it's all meets the ESCA requirements. It's not just we're gonna go spend the money on anything, it's actually uh, programmatic. So, um, and then this big part here in the middle, this is really um, going to tell us how you're going to spend your remaining funds um, between July 1st of 2024 and September 30th of 2024. Um, this includes your uh, just a brief description, which would be your activity. You don't have to write a novel. You could just say, we're gonna attend the annual summit um, and um, because they're implementing tier one or we're gonna do something on universal instructional strategies. And this is identified in our CNA. Um, you would just, the next column in this one, cost, you would just think about, okay, does this include registration, travel, out of contract hours? You would just put the cost in this. Now you just put the dollar amount. And then documentation. Um, this you would just like say, um, you would just write in here, um, um, registration or an agenda or um, something in here that we would know that if we needed to get documentation from you, that this is what you're going to use as your documentation. You don't need to submit any documentation to us or, or the department except for this actual plan, this exit plan. You don't have to submit any registration. You don't have to submit any documentation. Uh, we just wanna know that you have documentation. And if it is requested, you can access it because you said, oh, we're just gonna do, um, you know, we're gonna have our um, agenda or we're gonna have a sign-in sheet or we're gonna have, Proof of registration, maybe a certificate, something like that. That is a documentation that you could show if um, if you were asked to. But again, you don't need to submit any documentation except for this actual exit plan, actual plan. Um, and then the last column is just to talk about um, is this aligned already with your SIG applications? So if it's FY23 or FY24 funds. You just want to make sure that you hopefully you don't say no. If you say no, I'm going to like, well, you're going to have to go and re um, revise your FY23 and or FY24 SIG application um, should be together. Um, I did recently have a coach say, well, what if they already have all of their summer activities, uh, professional learning activities in already in their SIG applications? I'm like, great. All they got to do is copy and paste. Um, and so it's not that you have to create anything. Um, it's kind of twofold. One, if you're already doing it, put it in here. We know it's documented. Two, if you don't have anything planned for the summer, get that plan and get that, um, get that only in your SIG application, but also get it in your exit plan. And then at the bottom here, total cost, you're just going to take all the dollar amounts and put it here as, um, as an amount. And you're going to do this for FY23 and FY24. That's why it says part two and part three because I just decided to present it together. And then the lat, the part, sorry, part three, I think I put this on part, oh yeah, part 2A and part 2B. So part three, continuous school improvement plan. This again is just a description of how your SAU is going to continue to support the school's continuous school improvement plan. Um, you already have your CNA, you already have action staff, SMART goals that are in your SIG plans. Just this would just be a continuation of this and how um, how's the, the school or how's the SAU going to continue with that? A brief timeline, a funding source, and any other resources. I put here, like, go back to your strategic plan that you've already used. Go back to your SMART goals. Go back to your action steps. Go back to your CNA. It doesn't have to be something completely new. Just continue on with what you're doing, and you just want to describe that um, in that part of the, of the exit plan. And then the last piece is just an assurance. So we would need the signature of your superintendent, signature of the principal of the exiting school. And this just assures that two things. One, that um, when we do monitoring and performance reporting, that the school and the SAU are still responsible for, for 
for um, participating in that uh, for the FY22, 23, and 24 funds. I don't think we'll do 22. I think monitoring is going to be for 23 funds this year or next year. Um, and then the next sentence or next line is just if you do um, choose to give funds back to the department, you're just saying that you're you're signing off that you're doing that as well. But if you wrote no up in that section, if you put no here, then that part would not be applicable. Are there any questions on the exit plan? Kathy? Just a clarification on um, part two and part three of the finances. You want two separate forms filled out. For no, no, no. And in, in, the, in the template that I sent to everybody, so when everybody got the letter, when the schools, the letter was sent to the superintendent, the school principal, and the ESA coordinator, it was a template. Right. And part it's actually part 2A and part 2B. Part okay. 2A is FY23 and part 2B, I labeled it wrong on this. Part 2A is, um, is FY23 and part 2B is FY24. It's one form. It's just two different sections on... Okay. On, on the form and I can bring it up if I if I find it but yeah I just was trying to consolidate this presentation yeah. thank you <laughs> yep Monique yep Susan um on part 2a FY23 sig funds if they've um, zeroed it out do you still want them to fill in the award amount reimbursed yeah because then I'll know that there's okay. no money left there just put it put award amount We've expended all of it. I mean, you could say, um, yeah, hopefully they've they've expended it. Some, but but some schools haven't. Some schools still have FY twenty three funds. So did they have? Yeah, right. Thank you. And, and speaking of that, Monique, this is Melinda Brown from Maine Virtual mm -hmm. Academy. Um, yeah. So if there's invoices in progress, you know, and you know things are being drawn down to zero, but maybe it hasn't completely been reimbursed yet because it's in flux um would we just anticipate you know zero and then no we're not using this is specifically for fy23 funds yeah i mean fy23 might be a little more i would try to think of where will you be on 630 and then okay after and then that put, like so will you have drawn down, down on everything by 630 okay Right. Yeah. So in other words, what I could even star it and put, this is what we expect to do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I try to make this form as simple as possible, but there may, people yeah. may do some, you know, add some things to it. And that's okay too. If you want to cross off the four and put six on there, that's fine too. Instead of saying 430, you could put 630. Uh, we're just trying to get a ballpark because we, nobody likes to return funds. And if school's not going to use it, then we can reallocate it to, for another ESCA programming. And we're also trying to encourage you know, kind of give that push that get those invoices in, get those, um, you know, get get those reimbursements in so that you can, or invoices for reimbursement so that you're not left scrambling, you know, on 6.15 or even, you know, 9.15, so. Okay, thank you. Yep. I have other questions, but I'll wait until. Okay, I mean, okay. there's not much left, more, left, so, um, so the other piece I just wanted to keep, I think I've already referenced it, is that, in the past, um, SIG funds have not necessarily been audit, uh, monitored or had performance reports um, for a variety of reasons. Um, and um, the when we were audited by the feds last May, um, they said, you got to you got to monitor your SIG funds. So uh, SIG funds will be monitored in the FY24-25 monitoring cycle under ESCA. We're just going to house it under that. Um, so if your if your SAU is selected to be monitored um, for the FY24-25 for ESA monitoring, SIG funds will be monitored as well. So there will be questions asking you about um, SIG funds. So just as a reminder, um, these are all the requirements for SIG. So you may be asked to uh, to provide documentation that you are proof of this. Some of this we can find in the application. Uh, but others of it may may need more proof of that. Like if you don't have your travel policy or you don't have a policy for how you picked um, a consultant um, 
And I'm, I'm not trying to stress anyone out. I just don't want anyone to be shocked if they have to show documentation or have to answer questions about um, SIG funds uh, if they if their SAU gets selected for uh, monitoring for the FY24-25 monitoring year. Uh, and this, I just grabbed this slide from the January tier three principals meeting as well. And then lastly, I just wanted to say that um, the school profiles, you should be able to find them on the Maine's Model School Sports um, and on the ESSA dashboard. Currently, they are the 21, they are the 22-23 school profiles with the 21-22 data, but they will be updated in the next couple of weeks. So you want to just keep checking back. Um, and this is what one would look like um, when it does get um, when it does get um, posted. Um, it'll have the year up here. It'll have no support. Um, and this might change. Actually, this is old. This is it's going to change a little bit um, that we're trying to put cohorts up here. Um, and this just as you can see, the reason why this is exiting with no support is because there's no um, even though there's a red here, it has to be and. And so it has to be academic progress and academic achievement, and it's not. So even though they need a little more work for their chronic absenteeism and academic progress and toward English language arts, overall, they're doing really well. They're not meeting the exit tier three criteria. And so therefore they're going to exit tier three status and with no support. So that's a great place to be. Um, and then lastly, just our resources and opportunities, uh, professional development, um, and then our contact information, and then how to connect with the main DOE. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna stop recording. And if you guys have more questions, I will try to answer them.